What is going on guys, welcome to Gumps videos. My name is indeed Kyle Cooper, and today I'll be reviewing Avengers Infinity War. So this is going to be a spoiler filled review because it's Sunday, the time of the making of this video. So most people who are going to watch this video have seen the movie already. If you haven't, watch it. What are you doing? Try to get into the theater as soon as possible and then come back to watch this video. Now, that being said, let's get into the review starting with the goods. A lot of people tend to complain about the pacing, the tonal issues, and the amount of the characters. That, those are the three big things. Pacing, tone, and the amount of characters of what's going on. Those three things are not an issue for me. In fact, I think it's a pro. The fact that they were able to get this many characters and still make it seem like a fit movie is incredible. And by doing so, they had to focus on Thanos more, which actually makes him an amazing part of this movie. He's a, it's his movie. So people complaining about, hey, Spider-Man didn't get as much screen time as I would like. Well, guess what? It's not his movie. It's Thanos' movie. And Spider-Man's my favorite superhero of all time. And me saying that has to tell you something. It's Thanos' movie, so he gets the most screen time. But yet, we are still seeing these characters trying to, st trying to stop Thanos in their own little realms. And now when it comes to the pacing, sometimes it's too fast, sometimes it's too slow. To me, everything is just plain out fast. And when everything slows down, it's when they get to the humor and the humor works for me because it's not in like pivotal parts where like they're fighting Thanos and they're just like, oh, screw you, bitch. And like, no, no, no. Like they only joke when they think they have the upper hand. And in reality, they never do. So the jokes, work perfectly except for a couple jokes specifically in Wakanda like the Starbucks thing that was kind of flat I mean really and when it comes to the amount of uh, storylines and how fast everything is going people tend to say like hey there's so much going on everything's going so fast I got confused I never felt that one bit I saw the movie twice first and second time I never felt like everything was going too fast and everything was confusing because they make things pretty clear I, I don't understand where that argument's coming from maybe they went to go to the bathroom I, I don't know like I just I never had that issue with me it, it, it could have affected you and you probably things were going too fast for you I don't know but I was absorbing all this stuff and I understand why things had to be super fast because you have all these different characters trying to interact with each other and fight Thanos, but Thanos is not letting up. And if everything tended to be a little slow, then you'll be like, why didn't Thanos just go from this part of the galaxy to that part of the galaxy to earth and just get the stones? And that's what he did. If this is Thanos' movie, which it is, he's going to get those stones as fast as possible because he's, he says in the movie, I've lost so much already. So I would see why he wants the, this to end as fast as he does. So he's getting the stones bippity boppity boop and he just snaps his fingers and everything goes to fuck. So the pacing, the tone, the characters, everything worked fine for me. Now let's get into Thanos more. Holy shit, I love what they did with the, what they did with the Thanos character. Normally in the beginning when I first found out they were gonna change his story, I was actually really nervous with my other buddy. Well, a couple of my buddies were nervous. So I'm like, oh no, they're gonna make him look like the good guy. Oh, it's gonna suck. But what they did was actually make him really complex and I loved it. Because there was times when I was watching this movie, I was like, what? He, he does make a point. Like, he's not exactly torturing these people. He's snapping his fingers and everyone just dies. And I mean, like, more mouths to feed. I mean, like, if I had to be one of those people, I'm like, oh, I mean, okay, it's for the greater of the universe. But it's, it's just not right, like, what he's doing. There's clearly other methods he could use but other than genocide, but I mean, whatever. So on that end, with his his morals and what he thinks is right is great. Because when the main villain thinks he's right and he kind of is able to convince the audience that he's right, that's a great villain. But I was still siding with the Avengers because I'm like, I don't want these characters to die. I don't want half the universe to die. So on that end, it was amazing. And now we're going to get really heavy into spoilers. When he kills Gamora, I didn't really feel the emotional weight when Gamora died because like, there was just like, I never really attached myself to the character that much. I mean, it was like an oh shit factor, she's dead because I'd never theorized she was gonna be one of the people that died. Seeing Thanos' face as just the pure dread makes him really complex because you would think Thanos doesn't love, but he does. And when he kills her, it shows you how motivated he is to get this goal done. He said, I, I ignored my destiny once, and that's when his entire home planet died. He said, I'm not gonna let that happen again. 
It just it makes you go like, whoa, what the fuck? So Thanos' character, I think, is near flawless. In fact, I probably think it is flawless. Easily best Marvel villain. I can, I won't say he's the best villain in superhero history. He's probably top three, top five for me. Because when he's fucking people up, he's fucking people up. And when he killed Loki, holy shit, that was a brutal death. I almost forgot I was watching a Disney movie. Because he, he grabbed his neck and then snapped it. You saw the blood shooting to his eyes. And then you saw the freaking spine coming out of his fucking neck. That was brutal. That was the most brutal death. I've ever seen in like a superhero movie. I mean, I might be exaggerating. Well, not counting Deadpool, but that was very brutal. And one of my favorite scenes in the entire movie is when Hulk literally charges in and beats the shit out of Thanos. And then one of the Black Order guys was like, let him have this fun. Because in the theater, for the first time, I remember thinking to myself, I was like, wait, what? And then he just grabs his arms and then fucking whoops his ass so bad. Like Hulk does not show up for the rest of the movie. That might be a complaint for some people, which I will understand because he didn't get as much love in the first Avengers, but in the second Avengers, he shows up more. And then this movie, he, he gets even less love than the first Avengers, where he only shows up for like 30 seconds. And that 30 seconds is him getting his ass beat. I think he broke his nose too. That's how bad it is. And I understand on the story standpoint why they kept him out. And on a character standpoint, I understand why Hulk stayed away. So I do not fault them for that. In fact, it really showed you how dire the situation was. Now the character interactions was amazing. I love, my favorite banter is between Star-Lord, um, Iron Man and Doctor Strange. Those best three banter way ever. I, I just, the whole scene on Titan is easily my favorite scene, easily. I just loved when they're fighting Thanos. It was so badass. Now some of the people are complaining about what uh, Star-Lord did when he punched Thanos when they were about to take the glove off. I'm not going to defend it, but I'm not going to attack it either because on a writer standpoint, I know what they were trying to do because they they teased at the love between Gamora and Star-Lord, but they didn't do it enough to the point where I was able to be convinced that he would fuck up the entire universe for that. And people are saying how stupid he is. I mean, but guys... Star-Lord's always been stupid. If you like this character, you know he's fucking stupid. So, yeah, but like, I'm not going to defend what he did. But on a character standpoint, I understand why he tried to do it, but they just didn't develop the love between the two of them as much as they should have. Getting into some more complaints, um, I did say that I didn't care about how uh, many storylines there were and all that stuff. One complaint I do have to have is I wish everything kind of ended a little bit more tight. Like, what I mean is, like, I don't want the entire Avengers being together, but I wish uh, there wasn't two big fights going on at the same time. I mean big fights, because I didn't like going from Wakanda to Titan, to back to Wakanda, then back to somewhere else, and back into Titan. I would like to have seen one fight at a time, and I understand what they were trying to go for, because it's like... It's a flat-out war, and battles happen all over the, the universe when there's a war going on. But it seemed like they were trying to make Wakanda be like this, like, literally like this Lord of the Rings fight. Like, it's this epic, grand-scale thing, while the Titan fight is epic, but smaller in scale. But I didn't feel that much emotional weight towards Wakanda, because A, I was more interested in what was happening on Titan, and B, they didn't do as much of a setup for Wakanda fight as they did with Titan, because... They were saying, we're going to take the fight to Thanos and we're going to go meet him in Titan. And they were like, they were talking about it for a while. But when it came to the Wakanda fight, like the only setup we really got is like Black Panther going to um, Winter Soldier and saying, here's your metal arm. He's like, where's the war? And then that, that, that was it. And I'm like, wait, what? And then five minutes later, the fucking war started. I'm like, bro, whoa, that, that was fast. I understand why. Like I said, I can understand why they didn't do these things, but it's hard. It's hard. So it's not like they're just saying fuck it we don't care it's just the fact that there's so much going on they had to sacrifice some things i bet you there was definitely some more development to the fight because half the trailers we see we don't we don't get half those clips we really don't so if you watch the trailers and rewatch the movie you definitely see some of the clips are missing from the uh movie because i bet you i bet you when they release the full the like the blu-ray and all that stuff i bet you the movie's probably about three hours and 15 minutes. They had to cut half an hour, which I understand completely because still some people are complaining about how long the movie is. Let's talk about the deaths now because I talked about this movie long enough. So we talked about Loki. 
Hyde, Heidel, the gatekeeper guy. I mean, I didn't really feel that much for. It. I, I, I was like, oh, that sucks. I, 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 I kind of liked him. He wasn't a huge part in the uh, Thor movies, but he, he played a part. So I mean, but when he died, I just heard Idris Elba saying, "Thank God my role is dead." Because if you guys don't know, behind the scenes, he said how working with the MCU was horrible how he didn't like it so I, like when he died i just kept on hearing him saying thank god it's over so that's all i could see there was gamora and um when gamora died i was like oh shit that sucks who else died uh vision but that was like the last five ten minutes but i think he's staying dead if he comes back i'm not gonna be too happy but i mean unless he comes back without the mind stone which is possible because in the comics they do do that I don't think anyone else really died prior to the Infinity Gauntlet part. When he stabbed Iron Man, I never heard a theater just go <gasps> at once. The, the entire theater gasped and I heard everyone just chattering to themselves, no, not like this. No, not like this. And I was like, they're going to freaking do it. And they didn't do it. Which I'm really happy about. I'm not gonna lie, because like I said, I would I wanted someone to die, but we we, we got enough death in that movie. But yeah, th that part being aside, you're like when he snaps his fingers, like you heard people getting excited, but then everyone just stopped talking. The entire theater went silent. So when he is done talking to Baby Gamora, which was a powerful scene by the way, it's very powerful. Everything with Thanos and Gamora is really powerful stuff. I'm not gonna lie. But when you see Bucky fade away. I just looked at my body so I was like, no, <laughs> like I'm getting chills thinking about it. I'm like really getting chills because that never gets old, how sad and devastating because you never see your heroes lose. You never see the MCU heroes lose. And Captain America summed it up all really well. He's like, oh God, like he knew shit went down. And so when, like, I thought the uh, Kingsguard for Black Panther died, I was like, uh, whatever. But then it was Black Panther that faded away. Ever the guy next to me, who was not even with me, he was like, what? They did not just do that. And I was like, bruh. <laughs> and then you see Drax go away, Mantis, Star-Lord, all sad stuff. And then you see Doctor Strange, he was like, no, not Doctor Strange. And I thought that was going to be the worst of it. I said Spider-Man is my uh, favorite superhero of all time. <sighs> so, the fact that they gave him the slowest death really killed me inside. Like, when I say I was crying, no, I was crying. I know he's not staying dead, but it was the execution that made me cry. Because he looks at himself and he's like, I, I don't want to go. I don't want to die. And he started crying and I started crying and he hugged Iron Man and Iron Man's like, it's okay, buddy. It's okay. So he lays him on the ground nicely and he's like, I'm, I'm scared. And he just fades away. It was fucking sad. Like, if you didn't feel anything when that kid died, you're a heartless scumbag. You understand me? The reason why that was one of the more powerful deaths when, ever, when he snapped his fingers is because no one expected no one expected Spider-Man to die or no one expected him to be at risk because of Sony. And when I was done watching the first screening with my buddies, um, someone made a funny joke. When you see Spider-Man turn to Ash, that's uh, the Sony Marvel agreement just fading away. <laughs> I thought that was actually really funny because that's what I was low-key thinking when after he died. That was genuinely horrifying. And this is definitely, I wouldn't say it's really dark and gritty. The, the, the word I would use is hopeless. Because no matter what they did, nothing worked. Because the entire movie, the reason why it's so fast is because the Avengers are scattering around, trying to do what they can do, which is punch their way out of this. But the thing is, Thanos packs a bigger punch. And Thanos doesn't even freaking like get hurt like the biggest thing he gets is from Iron Man and he just scratches his face Powerful powerful shit. Those are basically my major thoughts of the movie like it could be a little scattered towards the end I would like it to be a little bit more Contained and a little bit more focused specifically with the fight scenes on Titan and Wakanda, but everything else 
if like something wasn't my way, I understand because like uh, like the movie's not going to be one hundred percent what I envisioned, and plus there's so much going on. So the fact that they focus more on Thanos makes the movie that much better. And that last shot with that at the end of the movie where, where he just sits down, looks out on the sunset like he said he would do, and then just smiles. Not even smiles, he grins, and then that's the end credits. It gets me chills because Thanos thinks he's done, but I really think Avengers 4 is going to be an, a, a revenge movie, like an Avengers movie, not, like no shit, but it's going to be all about revenge. So... Thanos easily best MCU villain. I loved his character. I'm so glad we're gonna see him in another movie. I'm gonna give this movie four out of five stars. The reason why it didn't get that extra point is because of the last two fight scenes were a little jumbled and not focused like I would like it to be. Like focus on the Wakanda fight, then kind of make way towards the Titan fight, but they didn't do that. Other than that, other than that. I think it was a brilliantly made movie with a couple more flaws, but like those flaws are understandable and like there's nothing they could have done. But yeah, man, I really love this movie. Very powerful stuff. I know half the characters that died are coming back, but I really hope Gamora and Vision are staying dead for the sake of stakes. So I have a Twitter, Instagram, Gums underscore videos. Go follow me there for the latest news and updates on my channel. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe, and all that crap later, and goodbye.